Now for our dinosaur of the day, Barosaurus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon, so thanks Cole. The name Barosaurus means heavy lizard, and it lived in the Jurassic, and the type species is Barosaurus lentis, and lentis means slow in Latin. The fossils were found in the Morrison Formation, and they were first found by the postmistress of Pottsville, South Dakota, Ms. E.R. Ellerman. Charles Marsh and John Bell Hatcher, who's from Yale University, excavated the fossils in 1889, and they only found six tail vertebrae back then. Marsh named it Barosaurus lentis. The rest of the specimen wasn't excavated until 1898, so it was left in the ground during that time. And Marsh's assistant, George Reber Vyland, dug up the bones and found more vertebrae, rib, and limb bones. Rachel Hatch, who owned the land where Barosaurus was found, guarded the land until Marsh's assistant could dig it up. So it's kind of cool that there's several women involved in this discovery. That is cool. It's too bad it's not called, like, post <laughs> In 1912, Earl Douglas, a fossil hunter, excavated four neck vertebrae, which were found near Diplodocus. But then William Jacob Holland said that they were part of a different species. It ended up being Barosaurus. Barosaurus was fully described in 1919 by Richard Swan Lull, and based on the description, the bones Earl Douglas found were considered to be a second partial Barosaurus skeleton. The second specimen is in the rock wall at Dinosaur National Monument, but it wasn't prepared until the 1980s. Cool. Douglas found the most complete Barosaurus in 1923. Fossils from this skeleton were spread across the University of Utah, National Museum of Natural History in D.C., and Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh. Then in 1929, Barnum Brown had all the bones shipped to the American Museum of Natural History in New York, where they still are today. Shows what kind of influence he had. Yeah. You can see a cast of Barosaurus mounted in the New York Museum in a controversial position. It's rearing up to defend its young from an allosaurus. Is that the one that's in the hall? I think that's in like that front, the Teddy Roosevelt Rotunda or something like that. Yes. That, it's pretty cool. The way they have it rearing up, it makes it much taller than it probably would have been in real life. But yeah. David Evans rediscovered a barosaur skeleton in 2007 in the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto. Earl Douglas had found the skeleton in the early 1900s, and then the museum had traded with the Carnegie Museum for it in 1962, but then it was completely forgotten about until David Evans saw a reference to it in the collection. At first, barosaurus was classified as Atlantosauridae, in that family, but then in 1898 it was classified as a diplodocid. Marsh named two smaller metatarsals that Violin had found as Barosaurus affinis, but that's now considered a junior synonym of Barosaurus lentis. One species that at one time was known as Barosaurus is Torniera africana. So what happened was in 1907, Ebhard Frost found two sauropods in German East Africa, now Tanzania, and he called them Gigantosaurus. But that genus name already belonged to a sauropod from England, so the Tanzania bones were renamed Torniaria in 1911. Then the bones were studied more closely, and Werner Janinch reclassified them as Barosaurus. But some paleontologists thought that the bones were too distinct, and in 2006 they were redescribed and called Torniaria. Yeah, we see that a lot, where they go back and forth on, is this its own dinosaur? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as much as we see rediscoveries of dinosaurs in museums. That's true. So Barosaurus is closely related to Diplodocus. It's about the same length as Diplodocus, but it had a longer neck and a shorter tail. No skull has been found, but it probably had a skull similar to Diplodocus and Apatosaurus, which had long skulls and peg-like teeth. It also had a whiplash tail, like Diplodocus. It was very large, up to 85 feet or 26 meters long, and weighed about 20 tons. Barosaurus had four limbs proportionately longer than other diplodocids, but shorter than most other types of sauropods. No feet have been found, but it probably had five toes in each foot with a large claw on the forefeet. Other dinosaurs in the Morrison Formation that lived at the same time as Barosaurus included Camptosaurus, Dryosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Othniosaurus. Also predatory dinosaurs, Sauropheganax, Torvosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Marchosaurus, Stoxosaurus, Ornitholestes, and Allosaurus. Other animals that lived at the time were snails, frogs, raven, fish, salamanders, turtles, lizards, and some pterosaurs, as well as some early mammals. And plants included algae, fungi, moss, horsetails, cycads, ginkgos, and conifers. Barosaurus had a long neck that may have helped it eat food without moving too much, or helped it get rid of excess body heat. Its neck was 30 feet long, one of the longest necks of any dinosaur, 
And the way that Barasaurus cervical vertebrae is structured means it could easily move its neck horizontally, but not vertically. And that means that it probably ate food in a different way from other diplodocids. It probably swept its neck at ground level for food, so it was not a high browser. Unless it could rear up. Maybe that's why it had to rear up, like, in the controversial pose, so it couldn't move its neck vertically. Or it couldn't rear up, and that's why it's a controversial pose. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> In 2009, Taylor, Whittle, and Nash said that sauropods probably held their necks high. Seymour and Lillywhite said that an 80-foot-long barosaurus would require 700 millimeters of mercury blood pressure for blood to reach its head. This means the left ventricle of its heart would have to weigh two tons, and it seems unlikely that such a large heart would have existed. So barosaurus probably had a smaller heart and could not have held its head up that high. That is a huge heart if it weighed two tons. Yes. I'm sure its heart was very large, but not that large. Maybe only one ton. In 1978, Robert Bakker said sauropods, quote, could have used contractions of neck musculature as a relay pump to carry the cranial arterial supply, end quote. But there's no evidence of this. There's evidence that some sauropods did hold their heads up high, like Giraffa Titan, which held its head up to 26 feet above its heart. So it's good for finding food, but it's unclear how they were able to do this or how big their hearts would have been. There's no soft tissue to study. Yeah, that's always the tricky thing. How do you figure out what the soft tissue is doing when you only have bones? Yes. So the reason we're going over all that is, as Garrett brought up, the way that Barasaurus is mounted at the American Museum of Natural History is controversial because it's rearing up and its neck is high, and it probably was not able to do that. This rearing up pose would have been really difficult on a Barasaurus heart. So probably instead, Barasaurus held its neck parallel to the ground, or it had blood accelerators or pseudo hearts in its neck to help pump blood. There's no evidence of this. These are just theories. I want to see a pseudo heart. If Barasaurus had reared up, it probably would have fallen and broken its neck, too. Oof. Mm -hmm. Bad times. (laughs) Yeah. There's only two Barasaurus skeletons on display in the world, the one in New York, and there's one in the Royal Ontario Museum. You can see an original skin imprint there, too. Cool. The American Museum of Natural History used to also have a model of a juvenile Barasaurus that was in the Miriam and Ira D. Wallach Orientation Center, and it was in there since 1996, but it was removed recently to make way for the new Titanosaur. Yeah, and it was pretty small, especially compared to the Titanosaur. Probably not compared to any living animal on Earth now, but... (laughs) Yeah. Peter Sound, director of The Good Dinosaur, talked about remembering visiting the American Museum of Natural History as a kid and being amazed by the Barosaurus. He said in an NPR article, quote, There was a Barosaurus in the atrium. It was kind of standing on two legs and it blew me away, that thing. It ignites the imagination to think that something that large could have roamed around New York. End quote. You might not realize that the American Museum of Natural History didn't really get any fossils from New York. Could be. <laughs> we'll let him have a pass, though. Yeah. yeah. They could have been in New York, maybe. There were dinosaurs in New Jersey. Yeah. There were some in New York, in like upstate New York, too, with the tracks, but I don't know about barosaurs. Yeah. So, the specimen at the Royal Ontario Museum that was found again is the largest mounted dinosaur in Canada. It's 90 feet or 27 and a half meters long. They use the skull of a diplodocus, so since no barosaur skull has been found. The Barasaurus bones in the Royal Ontario Museum are mounted in a way that they can be removed for paleontologists to study and replace again without disrupting the rest of the skeleton. More of its bones have been found in storage, and they may be added to the specimen. So it may end up also being the most complete Barasaurus known. And the nickname of that Barasaurus is Gordo. That's a good one. Yeah. Maybe that can be the fossil of Ontario. The Saskatchewan. Oh, Ontario, yeah, but they're not voting. That's too bad. You can see Barosaurus also in The Land Before Time, the great long neck migration. they are background characters who join Littlefoot and his family's herd. And Science Blogs, we'll post a link on our blog, has a post showing old depictions of Barosaurus that were very wrong. Drawings show Barosaurus raising its head really high, having a flexible tongue and veiny neck, <laughs> galloping, and also with a short tail. So some of them are kind of creepy. <laughs> veiny neck, short tail, galloping. Yeah. It's kind of like a horse or something. Well, these are multiple drawings. Yeah. Yeah. But still. So Barosaurus is part of the family Diplodocidae. Diplodocae means double beams. And this family includes Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Supersaurus, and Brontosaurus, in addition to Barosaurus. 
Compared to titanosaurs and brachiosaurs, diplodocids were slender and long with short legs, and their back legs were longer than their front legs. Many may have had spines on their backs. They had very long necks, they may not have been able to lift their heads up as high as other sauropods, and they had small heads and peg-like teeth. They probably didn't chew, but rather swallowed gastroliths to digest their food, and they had long whip-like tails that they could snap. Diplodocidae was originally known as Amphicoelidae, which was named by Edward Cope in 1878, but then that became a forgotten name. Charles Marsh also named the family Atlantosauridae back in 1877, but that's also become a forgotten name, or nomen obletum. Barosaurus is in the subfamily Diplodocene which also includes Diplodocus, Torniera, and Dinherosaurus. This subfamily lived in the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, and another subfamily are the Apatosaurines. Diplodocines were more slender and had longer necks and tails. 